Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to learn about what's new in Chrome OS. Our theme today is growth. Growth for Chrome OS and growth for you. My name is Sanjay, and I'm a product manager on our apps and platforms team. Over the past 10 years, Chrome OS has grown at an incredible rate. Chromebooks made by top device brands such as Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and Samsung are being used in more than one third of the countries around the world. Last year, Chrome OS grew at 92% year over year, five times the rate of the PC market, making Chrome OS the second most popular desktop OS in the world, not to mention the fastest growing. In addition to the exciting growth I just mentioned, Chromebooks have evolved to support cutting edge technology, including 4K OLED displays, LTE connectivity, and awesome new stylus capabilities over the past year alone. We're poised to continue this momentum in 2021. By the end of this year, we'll launch 50 new Chromebook devices, giving users more options than ever before. Chrome OS has continued to grow in education. Around the world today, more than 40 million students and educators are using Chromebooks. Virtual learning tools have been crucial as more schoolwork is happening at home. With a growing ecosystem of cloud apps for virtual collaboration on video editing, podcasting, book publishing, and other creative work, Chrome OS is helping teachers and students pick up wherever they left off on any device at home or at school. To further support kids and developers, we're launching a new interactive magazine for kids this summer on Chrome OS. Our first issue will introduce kids to a collection of amazing tools for game design on Chromebooks, feature kid-friendly games, and include an interview with Jesse Schell, the author of The Art of Game Design, about how he got started making games. From the classroom to the boardroom, Chromebooks are helping make remote work simpler and more seamless. Enterprise is another area of tremendous growth. As companies prepared for a remote workforce last year, businesses saw the benefits of fast deployment, easy remote management, and a great experience for their employees. Zoom is a standout example of a company that recognizes and addresses the needs of the hybrid workforce. As a part of joining the Modern Computing Alliance last December, Zoom is building a PWA to enhance their experience on Chromebooks. Of course, none of this incredible growth for consumers, education, and enterprise would be possible without developers creating powerful apps for Chromebooks. Over the past year, we've seen more developers optimize their apps for Chrome OS than ever before, and users are loving it. Minecraft EDU launched late last year, and users are already spending millions of minutes per month exercising their creativity, collaboration, and problem-solving muscles. Spotify is now the most used music app on Chromebooks after optimizing their Android app to support large screen devices. And Adobe Spark enables users of all skill levels to create graphics, photos, and videos quickly. Spark's PWA works incredibly well on Chromebooks where over 1 million projects are created each month. All of these apps and many more have been optimized for Chromebooks as developers continue to invest in large screen compatibility as well as keyboard and mouse support. For those developers, we're working to make Chromebook optimized apps more discoverable in Google Play. These apps will be surfaced as content forward listings at the top of the Google Play app on Chrome OS, where we spotlight the best optimized apps for the platform. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Emily, to talk a little bit more about web apps and PWAs. Thanks, Sanjay. Hi, my name is Emily Roberts, a developer advocate for Chrome OS. Have you ever said, you can't do that on the web? Well, don't be so sure. With recent improvements, the web offers a whole bunch of new capabilities, allowing for performant installed app experiences while still offering the device independence of the web. That means developers can build desktop competitive applications that work everywhere and that are easy to monetize through subscriptions and in-app purchases on Chromebooks. New APIs put expanded functionality into the hands of developers. Through the Fugu project, the web platform has added more than 30 new web capabilities in the last few years. Some recent examples that narrow the gap toward installed app level functionality and performance are the file handling API that allows for fast OS level file access, hardware video codecs, serial port APIs, input devices, pan, tilt, and zoom camera controls, and more. Check out the growing list at web.dev slash tags slash capabilities. Also, look for the IO talk on new web APIs, 
for how to get started with some of these. In addition to new APIs, we have been improving performance under the hood. This includes things like reductions in audio latency, improvements in WebAssembly, low latency stylus for web, and more. For example, this past year, as folks were needing to connect virtually, there was an increase in the usage of video conferencing apps. We were able to make some big reductions in CPU and GPU usage, as well as battery consumption, to improve the user experience. So, once you have built your awesome, performant web app with all of these new capabilities, what then? The next step is to list it on Google Play, making it available to billions of Android phones and Chromebooks. We've made it easier to package your PWA for upload with the open source bubble wrap tool, available on GitHub. If you would like to dive deeper into this process, check out our talk, list your PWA in Google Play. Distribution is great, but what about making money? Using the web payments and digital goods APIs, you can add in-app purchases and subscriptions to your web app. If you already have Google Play billing integrated into an Android version of your app, the digital goods API calls in your web app will look very similar. In addition, web purchases should integrate easily with your existing backend server and financial reporting. And of course, all Google Play purchases will be available from both the web and Android versions of your app, regardless of where the purchases were made. Also note, if you use other distribution channels in addition to Play, the web payment and digital goods APIs are designed from the ground up to support multiple payment platforms. Here's a really quick example of using the digital goods API to interact with purchases from Google Play Billing. You get an instance of the service, then you can interact with Google Play Billing as you'd expect. Here, I'm listing all the purchases for this user. And then you can do things such as access purchase details, like what is being done with the item ID here. Check out the talk on enabling payments in your PWA or the documentation on chromeos.dev for more information. New capabilities, distribution, monetization, that's all great, but can a web app really provide the same experience as a traditional Android app? Well, yes. In fact, many apps you know and love are web apps. Here's an example of a few that are available in Google Play today on Chrome OS. Some of these apps would have been impossible to build on the web just a couple of years ago. I invite you to check them out and to think about your own apps, present and future, and assess whether the web might be the ideal platform for them. Now I'm going to hand it back over to Sanjay to take you through a few updates on Android for Chrome OS. Android continues to be huge for Chrome OS. In just the last year, Android app usage has tripled. Users love using Android apps for games, media, streaming, and Chrome OS lets them access the apps they know and love on larger screens. We have a number of IO talks about how to make your apps look and work great on the platform, and chromeos.dev is full of helpful resources, guides, and code snippets. The site offers great guidance on how to adapt your app for large screens, how to handle inputs like keyboard and mouse, and tips for supporting x86 and ARM build targets. Check out chromeos.dev to learn all about that and more. We have a lot of new things to look out for in 2021. Right now, most Chromebooks are running Android 9. What's great about Chrome OS is how consistently our fleet of devices runs a fairly new version of the OS. On that note, we're excited to announce that we're updating Chromebooks to Android 11 throughout the year. As a part of this update, we're moving Android from a container into a virtual machine. The VM is more secure, more stable, and offers tremendous performance benefits. As developers, you don't need to worry about making any changes. This is just one more way we're investing to make sure your apps and games are at their best on Chromebooks. We'll be rolling this out to Chromebooks as we update them to Android 11 over the coming months. This year, we're also partnering with the Android team to help apps designed for mobile devices like smartphones and tablets run even better on Chromebooks. We recently launched some runtime improvements to support better app resizing, scaling, and app rendering. You can take them for a test drive on any Chromebook running Android 11. And last but not least, one of users' favorite things about Android, games. 
As people play games across more types of devices and screen sizes, we're working hard to deliver experiences that defy expectations. I'm happy to announce that we're working with Unity to make it even easier to build immersive, high-performance gaming experiences on Chrome OS. The Unity 2021.2 Alpha supports Chrome OS as a build target in the Android developer environment. Unity will be backporting this capability to 2020 long-term stable coming by the end of 2021. Keep an eye out on chromeos.dev and your Unity editor release notes for more details. Now back to Emily for a quick update on Linux before we wrap up. Thanks, Sanjay. Regarding developing on Chromebooks, I am really pleased to announce that the Linux development environment is going to be out of beta in our next release. There have been a lot of updates over the last year, including a new terminal app, better USB support, configurable port forwarding, and a whole lot of work on performance and stability. One nice improvement is that now, when you install a Chrome OS update, your Linux container is updated at the same time. Before, you had to wait 3, 5, or up to 15 minutes for it to update independently after an OS update. No longer. This is a nice example of the increasing polish happening with Linux on Chrome OS. Linux and developing right on a Chromebook is one of my favorite features, so I love that the integration is getting better and better. A deeper dive into many of the topics we have touched on today, including Linux, optimizing Android apps, building PWAs, as well as many more all about developing for and on Chrome OS can be found at chromeos.dev. With that, I would like to thank you for your continued enthusiasm for our awesome operating system over the last 10 years. And I hope you will be right there with us for the next 10. <laughs>